anyone that works with beavers or, or even just comes into a beaver habitat starts to feel that love for the species because there is no wilder place than a beaver habitat. We can't recreate anything like it. And that is what brings me the most joy about beavers. I don't need to see the animal. The, the, the best bit is what they achieve. And, and it's just, it's a rodent. It's a spaniel sized rodent that, that has a greater impact than pretty much any other animal apart from us and elephants. And, and that just brings me joy, really. My name's Taylor or Tay Davies. Um, I am the rewilding ecologist here at Rewilding Coombs Head. We are here in the beaver enclosure at Coombs Head, which has been here for just over 10 years now, with various iterations of families uh, coming through in that time. And we're up at the top pond, which is a man-made pond, which allowed us to introduce the beavers into here. Um, they do need a little bit of water to set up shop. And what they've done is created two lodges at the back of the pond there. One that we can see, one that is obscured by purple loose strife at the moment. And those are giant uh, structures made of wood and mud with a, an underwater entrance into a nice warm chamber inside, which is lined with wood shavings that they make themselves. And basically that structure protects them from most predators. So anything from bears, wolves to, uh, to otters and foxes. And really the main threats to them are kind of gone now. So bears, wolves and lynx would have been real threats. All of our present carnivores are um, maybe a minor threat to the, to the babies, but, but really not much of a threat at all. Thankfully, the beavers still do everything that they do and everything that they do is basically predator avoidance. So all of their damming, their water modification is, is helping them to escape from predators. So they're bringing water to where they want to be feeding and it allows them that kind of escape route um, if anything bad should come at them. Before beavers, there was no water really. There was a, a kind of a ditch system running straight down the habitat, which, you know, after a few days of rain would probably have a good, good steady trickle in it. But after a few days of sun would probably be totally dry. What the beavers have done is monopolized on that trickle and basically set up a terrace of dams all the way through the habitat. So now from what was once that trickle system, you've got these, these big pools and this wetland system all the way through, full of wildflowers, um, full of bird life, full of amphibians, full of just everything is boosted as soon as we put these beavers in. They have been taking a few trees down, which is allowing a bit more light into those watery systems as well, creating more of a naturalistic system, which again benefits all that biodiversity. Those dams also are, are helping to hold back that water, creating a sponge of a habitat where before the water would just whoosh straight on through and down into the valleys below, where it would continue unhindered and create potential flooding downstream. They are collecting carbon and storing it within that dam structure and they are capturing pollutants and preventing them from entering the, the main watercourses as well. So there's a lot of benefits to beavers and that's why we kind of have been trying to restore them to this country. The beavers live in a family structure so you'll have the two parents uh, and their various ages of offspring. So uh, in here right now we've got the, the two adults, uh, I think three kits from this year and then two from the year before and maybe one from the year before that so possibly eight maybe less. Naturally in an unenclosed system once they're about two or three years old beaver kits tend to be kind of pushed out of their of their home territory and have to go and find their own way. There are exceptions to that sometimes if the habitat is of really high quality and the catchment is quite full of beavers then maybe the the kits can stick with the parents for a bit longer but mostly around two or three years old, they, they go and find their own way. And then they'll head off downstream and set up territories. But that's a very dangerous time to be a beaver because, because they are so territorial and beaver habitat by, by nature is very linear. So these juveniles or adolescents heading through the, the habitat uh, will have to encounter lots of other quite aggressive beavers. So even when you've got that full suite of predators, the main cause of beaver mortality is other beavers and territoriality between uh, beavers. So yeah, so in here we have that, that kind of set of that family. We'll have to remove that older kit probably at the end of the year. 
otherwise the parents will start to, to be aggressive towards it. And then they'll breed again next year and it's a kind of cycle like that. So ideally when you, when you do move the, the kits, you need to pair them up first. Looking at the pond above us, there probably isn't enough tree vegetation around it. They do need quite a bit of trees to, uh, to survive because that's what they eat during the winter. During the summer, there's lots of this stuff around, so lots of herbaceous vegetation. Uh, they've been recorded eating over 300 species of plant uh, in the spring and summer. But once that all dies back in the autumn and winter, that's when they really start going for the trees because they're the best source of nutrient rich and energy rich food at that time of year. So they'll cut down the trees and take off all the top branches, basically. They'll eat the bark and the layer underneath the bark, which is, is full of sugars, essentially. And that can help them get through the winter. Beavers being rodents, their teeth are constantly growing. So we need them to be able to grind them down, essentially. The story of beavers has been really quite good here. A couple of farms away from here is the River Carey, uh, which flows into the River Tamar, a couple of farms away from that. And so you fast forward to today and there are now beavers all the way down the River Carey, all the way down the River Tamar, and they're starting to move up into various tributaries of those rivers. There really isn't much conflict with people in this part of Devon uh, because those river valleys are, are, are really well wooded. They're, they're quite steep sided and so we've we don't have farmed fields going right up to the watercourse. We don't tend to have a huge amount of houses or roads going right by the rivers. The potential for conflict uh, is, is really minimalized here and we, we do tend to just not really hear of it. It's a case of us needing to be able to share with nature, which is something we need to learn to do regardless of whether it's beavers or, uh, or wildcats or who knows, lynx or wolves in the future. Thank you.